When Donald Trump's back is against the wall, he ramps up the lying, he targets migrants even more, and he hides in his safe spaces, running away from the traditional mainstream press. And guess what? That is exactly what we are seeing from Donald Trump right now. I'm gonna break down the latest. My name is Brett Mycellus, here with the Midas Touch Network. Remember to hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3.5 million subscribers, and we need your help to get there. Let's start with the polls that have Donald Trump freaking out this morning. A new general election poll from Morning Consult, a massive sample size of over 11,000 likely voters, has Vice President Kamala Harris up six over Donald Trump, 51% to 45%. Meanwhile, the new New York Times Siena poll, an A-plus rated poll, has Vice President Kamala Harris up three over Donald Trump, 49% to 46%. Last month, it was 47% to 47%, a tie. And this, to me, I think was one of the most interesting facts from the poll and one of the most impactful facts to know, 9% of registered Republicans said they plan to vote for Vice President Harris. That's up from 5% in the last poll, showing that the Vice President's outreach to this group is working. You saw the Vice President with Liz Cheney on 60 Minutes the other night. There is a reason she is doing those appearances and those seals of approval from people like Liz Cheney, from Adam Kinzinger, are starting to pay off in the polls. Let's look at these general election polls in the states. In Wisconsin, Harris up two. In Pennsylvania, Harris up one. And Michigan, uh, Harris up three in the new research poll among likely voters. In the new Pennsylvania poll out for Liberty for Pennsylvania and the Bullfinch group, this was commissioned by a Republican group. Uh, let me just emphasize that at the start. It has Vice President Kamala Harris up 50% to Trump's 46%. Harris up four. In the Senate, it has Senator Bob Casey up 50%. 52% over McCormick's 42%, another huge poll out there for the Democrats and for Vice President Kamala Harris in a must-win state. And it's not just the polls, it is the physical data that is coming in about absentee ballots and mail ballots that are being delivered. We can't tell what the actual votes are, but we can tell the party affiliation of those who have submitted ballots. And so as of now, 217,366 ballots in Pennsylvania has been submitted. That's an extra 79,712 since October 7th, and this data is as of October 8th. Of those ballots that have been submitted, 71.7% have been Democrat, 19% have been Republican, and 8.1% have been other, like non-affiliateds and things like that. That is a massive firewall that is building there for Vice President Kamala Harris in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, potentially. Let's check out Detroit. Detroit leads Michigan right now with absentee ballot returns, and they are returning a whole lot of ballots, seems to be outpacing previous years, and Detroit, of course, is a Democratic stronghold. This is causing the Trump campaign to completely spin out, and they are looking for any excuse and any distraction. Like I said before, they are ramping up their lies. So as part of their new disinformation efforts, they are furious that Vice President Kamala Harris was able to take center stage on 60 Minutes the other night. Trump backed out because he was too afraid of being fact-checked. That's not even just me saying it. That's what the Trump campaign admitted to. They did not want to be fact-checked, and 60 Minutes reported that during their broadcast. So now the whole thing that Trump is trying to push and all of his propagandists on social media was that this was the biggest disaster for Vice President Kamala Harris, the end of her campaign. I saw the whole thing. It was fantastic. I know you saw it. I know plenty of people who saw it and thought the Vice President did a fantastic job, but Trump needs to ramp up his disinformation efforts because his whole campaign is based on lies and deceit. So the Trump Vance campaign released this press release saying, Trump campaign demands 60 Minutes release unedited Kamala interview transcript. On Sunday, 60 Minutes teased Kamala's a highly anticipated sit-down interview with one of her worst word salads to date, which received significant criticism on social media. During the full interview Monday evening, the word salad was deceptively edited to lessen Kamala's idiotic response. Like, who wrote this? Like a three-year-old? Why did 60 Minutes choose not to air Kamala's full word salad? And what else did they choose not to air? The American people deserve the full unedited transcript from Kamala's sit-down interview. We call upon 60 Minutes and CBS to release it. What do they and Kamala have to hide? Carolyn, leave it. 
Levitt National Press Secretary. Oh, I, I, that's, uh, that, that answers my question. Who wrote this? A three-year-old, uh, Carolyn Levitt, who is Trump's press secretary, who is not the brightest uh, bulb out there. Now, let's talk about this for just a second, just to address the fact that Donald Trump is accusing somebody else of speaking in word salad. Have you ever listened to yourself speak? Even this statement is just all word salad. And Donald Trump would not get over this. Like he's been posting about this all day. You could see this one right here, this post. He said on a social media app, the interview on 60 Minutes with comrade Kamala Harris is considered by many of those who reviewed it the worst interview they have ever seen. She literally had no idea what they were talking about, blah, 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 blah. And then he lies about the hurricane efforts again, spreading more disinformation. And he says, I can't imagine anybody living in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, or Tennessee voting for her, showing that he's doing this all to try to win votes. He's just making stuff up. It's lie after lie after lie, and it is harming people. It is putting people's lives at risk. I mean, Donald Trump is seriously the biggest threat to our country right now. He continues the lies on a social media platform, writing, the worst response to a storm or hurricane disaster in U.S. history with another one coming. Our country cannot withstand four more years of these incompetent fools. The whole world is laughing at us. The whole world is laughing at you. The whole world is laughing at you, Donald Trump. And quite literally, remember when you went to the UN and the whole world laughed in your face? That is what the whole world is doing every single day. And you continue to spread these lies about the recovery efforts, which every Republican official says has been A plus, an A plus recovery effort. Every first responder on the ground has praised the recovery effort. You are the one trying to politicize this and spread lies and you are harming people in the process. And you know what? People are even noticing on the ground that these lies are affecting things. Like, let me show you this comment. This is from not a liberal, not a Democrat, not even somebody who even likes speaking with Democrats. This is from Christina Pushaw. She is the press secretary for Ron DeSantis. And she is having to bat down people spreading lies like Donald Trump on social media about the situation in Florida. And this is one of the issues about spreading lies like this. You put people's lives at risk. And when you are constantly encouraging people to not trust the government and not trust the experts, you let conspiracy theories like this run wild. And when there is a serious crisis, you put people's lives on the line. So Christina Pushaw, who is Ron DeSantis's press secretary, writes, spreading lies like this could have serious consequences. If people in an evacuation zone see this and decide not to evacuate, despite warnings from state and local emergency management, they are unnecessarily putting their own lives and lives of first responders at great risk. Like I said before, this is why sowing so much distrust in experts and the government is so dangerous. It leads to situations like this when crisis strikes. Donald Trump also writes on a social media platform, in all caps, anybody that cheats on the election is going to jail. I'll just say, Donald, you may not know how right you are. We will let special counsel Jack Smith take care of that after the election. Donald Trump continues to spread lies on his social media, writing, I was the one who got $35 insulin, not Lion Kamala. I've never seen a group that lies so much, like making up out of thin air that the US produced 818,000 new jobs. He talks about, he says she didn't work at McDonald's, blah, 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 blah. More lies, more lies, more lies. Like He likes to take credit for things that Vice President Harris and President Biden actually did. Maybe you actually like them more than you lead on, Donald. Here are the facts with this. CNN has done a fact check of this like a billion times. Trump keeps falsely accusing Harris and Biden about lying about $35 insulin. And here's how CNN explains it in their fact check. They say facts first. Trump's narrative is false. He did create a $35 per month cap on insulin for some people on Medicare through a voluntary program that prescription drug plans could choose to participate in. But he did not sign a law to secure the funding of the program. Biden and Harris did get a law passed, and that law created a permanent $35 per month Medicare insulin policy that went far beyond Trump's. The law ensured that all 3.4 million plus insulin users on Medicare, not just some of them, got $35 per month insulin. It did so through a mandatory cap that not only covers more people than Trump's voluntary cap did, but also applies to a greater number of insulin products than Trump's did and stays in effect at a level of individual drug spending at which Trump's cap disappeared. Facts first. Thank you for that fact check, CNN. Now, I want to play you a video that we made here at the Midas Touch Network. This is our newest 
original short because Donald Trump has frequently liked to say that he had the best people around him, right? But I think we've noticed the pattern over these past few years that all of Trump's best people are saying that you should not support him for a second term. This, to me, and I hope to you, says a whole lot. Here is our new short. I hope you like it. If you like Trump's NFTs, a great Christmas gift, then you'll love the I Know the Best People pack of digital trading cards. We've got the best people. I know the best people. I have the best people. That's right. And this top tier talent refuses to support Trump for a second term. We worked with him, we knew him, and we are telling you, America, this man is unfit to be president. And a second term would be more dangerous than a first. These people know what he was really like as president, and they're from every corner of the government. Cabinet members. I have a lot of concerns about Donald Trump. I have said that he's a threat to democracy. Trusted advisors. He will always put his own interests and his own ego ahead of everything else. Intelligence officials. It appalls me that he could be elected president again. White House staff. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for a fascist government. Military leaders. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen. We're a tyrant. The vice president. Anyone who asks someone else to put them over the Constitution should never be president of the United States again. And the pack keeps getting bigger. So for the cost of one vote this November, you'll get bodily autonomy, a president who isn't a convicted felon, the American system of government, free and fair elections, a first gentleman named Doug, and so much more. Never have there been so many defectors from a single administration. So if you want to be one of Trump's best people, don't support him for a second term. I love that video. A second gentleman named Doug, I think that has to be my favorite part. By the way, if you want to just watch that video on its own, it's currently on our Substack at MidasPlus.com. It's there for free. You could go there, check it out, watch it, subscribe, and you could share the video out far and wide. Go, go check it out, MidasPlus.com. Mitt Romney was speaking yesterday, and he was clapping back against the disinformation being put out against Donald Trump. He said, we're not only after worrying about, dis we don't have to worry about disinformation just by the Russians and the Chinese. Trump Trump is spreading false claims about the FEMA emergency money. Watch Mitt Romney break it down. They're, they will make a, a heroic effort to try and do so. I actually don't think that's going to significantly impact the election, but um, uh, the amount of disinformation is really extraordinary, although it's not just being put out by the Russians and the Chinese. I mean, former President Trump told us that the people in Springfield are eating dogs and cats, all right? I mean, you know, uh, he likewise said that, that FEMA money, our emergency money, instead of helping the people that have been hit by the hurricane, is being used to help illegals. I mean, he just makes it up. Um, and, uh, and so he is able to spew enough disinformation that, uh, that, that is, I, you know, that the Chinese must be smiling. Romney also discussed who he's going to be voting for in 2024. He basically said he is voting for Vice President Kamala Harris without actually saying that. Watch this. You've said in the past that you will not be voting for former President Trump in this upcoming election, but you've also not taken the plunge, so to speak, the way other uh, conservatives have, like Liz Cheney. And my question is, what's stopping you from getting to the point where you'll say you'll vote for Kamala Harris and you know endorse her the way that Liz Cheney has? Yeah, I, I made it very clear that, that uh, I don't want Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States, and you're going to have to do the very difficult calculation of what that would mean, all right? Uh, and um, uh, I, I, uh, my, own, my own view is that uh, uh, I, I want to continue to have a voice in the Republican Party following this election, because I think there's a good shot that the Republican Party is going to need to be rebuilt and reoriented either after this election or Donald Trump is reelected after he's the president. Uh, and uh, and believe I will have more influence in the party by virtue of saying it as I've said it. So I'm not planning on changing the way I've described it, but shouldn't be terribly hard. Given the fact that that I voted twice to convict him in the impeachment trials, <laughs> which would have which would have prevented him from actually running again, I, I think where I stand on Donald Trump is pretty clear. I wish he would just come out and say it, but I guess that's the closest we're going to get from Mitt. But nevertheless, I am happy that he is speaking out. Meanwhile, Nikki Haley was asking about all of her attacks that she's made on Trump during the Republican primary and how she sort of changed. And they asked, do you still believe those things? 
Here's what she had to say about that. During your most recent campaign for president, you remarked, quote, in politics, the herd mentality is enormously strong. A lot of Republican politicians have surrendered to it. Of course, many of the same politicians who now publicly embrace Trump privately, privately dread him. They know what a disaster he has been and will continue to be for our party. They're just too afraid to say it out loud, end quote. Now that you have suspended your campaign, you have frequently downplayed his impact on your party and has even gone so far as to offer yourself as a surrogate for his campaign. My question to you is this, would it be fair to categorize you as one of the many politicians who privately dread him, who know what a disaster he has been and will continue to be for your party, and are you just too afraid to say it out loud? So, thank you for that question, Matt. <laughs> what I have said since the election, since what happened, I said everything that I said on the campaign trail, I stand by. I said it because I believed it. I said it because I was telling the truth to everyone. So Nikki, the fact that you think those things and still think those things, honestly, it makes it even worse that you are volunteering to be a surrogate for Donald Trump and saying that you're gonna vote for him. It just makes you a chameleon and makes you completely untrustworthy and it is a disgrace, quite frankly. You don't get any respect for me from that, but I do respect your voters who are going to be voting for Vice President Kamala Harris and the, and the polls are bearing that out. J.D. Vance continues his series of disastrous appearances. He was in Michigan yesterday and a reporter asked him about some of the lies that he's spreading about spreading about FEMA disaster relief. And they're saying like, none of the stuff you're saying is true. You could see Vance really doesn't have an answer to that. Watch this. Okay. Uh, thank you, Senator Historian with uh, CBS News. You said in an interview with Newsmax yesterday that <laughs> that uh, FEMA was, uh, disaster relief was being used to uh, fund migrant, um, to focus on migrants, rather. Donald Trump also said on Truth Social that most, if not all, of the money that FEMA spent is on migrants. Uh, FEMA officials say that's just not true. What evidence do you guys have yeah. to suggest that? So here's, 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 here's the evidence. And by the way, I, I just want to make an observation about about these, these, these reporters, and I appreciate the question is, you know, when, when people say that they feel endangered by a crowd voicing their opinion, well, look, my friends, the First Amendment goes in both directions. I'm not sure if you noticed, there were people behind J.D. Vance there in Michigan wearing shirts that read auto workers for Trump. You could see them right now. There's, there was a line of them right behind J.D. Vance and the Detroit News, who does incredible work. Follow the Detroit News. Check out Detroit News, their website. They do great reporting. They asked the Trump supporters if they were actually auto workers or not. And at least six of the Trump supporters, and you see six in this photo right here, <laughs> acknowledge that they are not even auto workers at all, and they were just handed those shirts to wear during the event. Like I said, this entire campaign is one big disinformation operation. It's one big psyop. It's just a big lie after big lie after big lie. During the event in Michigan, J.D. Vance was also asked, why should African-American Michiganders vote for the Trump Vance ticket? His response was not great, watch. Uh, Detroit is 77% African-American. Uh, the state is 14% African-American. Why should African-American Michiganders vote for the Trump fans ticket? Well, you know, we, we've, we've, we, we've, got, we've got a great number of black Americans in this crowd right now. They could probably answer that question better than I could, but. Yeah, there must have been off camera uh, on the other side, I guess, JD. Yeah, okay. Uh, JD Vance backstage was asked, he, they said, what do you have to say to moderate Republicans who are disappointed with your stance on the 2020 election? He keeps getting asked about this because he refuses to answer and JD Vance once again refused to answer. Watch him deflect. What do you have to say to moderate Republicans who are disappointed with your stance on certifying the 2020 election results? Yeah, well, what I'd say is that, first of all, the 2020 election is in the past. Nope. By the way, there's more data coming in from Michigan as well that is showing that Donald Trump's policies are extremely unpopular. This is from Chad Levengood. He's the politics editor at the Detroit News, and he writes that two in three likely Michigan voters think Donald Trump's 20% tariff plan will lead to higher prices. And 
7 in 10 voters are not seeing the massive crime wave Trump is talking about on the stump. It's part of the problem about lying about everything. It's that eventually people open their eyes and they look for themselves and they see that you are lying about everything, especially if you're speaking about issues in their towns. The disinformation can only go so far, especially with all of us right here pushing back with the truth. Trump has been petrified to actually hold a real interview with actual press, so he's been spending all of his time on propaganda networks like Fox and like Newsmax. So last night, Donald Trump had a disastrous appearance on Newsmax, where he acknowledged that the Haitian migrants in Springfield in Ohio, who he's been demeaning and dehumanizing, are here legally, but then says that they are illegal as far as he's concerned. Watch this. And, and it was they may have done it through a certain uh, little uh, trick, but they are illegal immigrants as yeah. far as I'm concerned. They're destroying the town. They're destroying the whole. They'll end up destroying the state. Yeah. We cannot let this happen. And I implore everybody to really take seriously what Trump says there, because he does not care about your legal status or if you're illegal. If he doesn't like you, he's going to make up lies about you. He's going to try to deport you. There's no immigrant immigrant group in our country who is safe under a Donald Trump presidency. The host also asked about Kamala Harris saying she's going to make the rich pay their fair share. Donald Trump warned the host, you never tax the rich. You should not tax the rich at all. Okay, uh, at least he's making it clear. Watch this. And and they keep they keep blaming the, the blame always seems to go on on her end to corporate price fixing and, and vilifying the, the corporations and this kind of the companies in this country and and the, when asked how she's going to pay for the agenda last night on sixty minutes she just keeps saying she's going to tax the rich even Bill Whitaker on sixty minutes is saying well we we live in the real world how are you really going to do that well you don't tax the rich because the rich are going to look. The rich pay most of the tax in the country. So with fewer than 30 days until election day, you would expect Donald Trump to be spending all of his time in the states that matter and reaching voters where they are. Instead, Donald Trump has planned a rally in the Coachella Valley in California. Nobody really knows why. Maybe he wants to compare his crowd sizes to the Coachella Concert Festival. Who knows? It's a very odd decision, to say the least, for somebody who wants to win an election, I guess. But Jeffrey Bernstein, the mayor of the city of Palm Springs, released a statement about this, and I found it extremely powerful. I wanted to read it to you today. Jeffrey wrote, To those of you who have reached out, I was as shocked as you to learn that Trump has decided to hold a rally in our valley this weekend. Trump advocates for so much that is antithetical to the core of the Coachella Valley. Our valley is, comp is comprised of a diverse population who also make up much of our workforce. Donald Trump's proposed policies would significantly disadvantage our economic future, our educational future, and our lifestyle. As we experience record heat, air quality issues, and unforeseen weather patterns, we know climate issues are imperative. In 2020, Donald Trump said about our windmills, quote, they're rotting, they look like hell. I believe we need to double down on our investment in renewable energy. In Palm Springs, we pride ourselves on being a city, quote, like no place else. That is primarily due to our LGBTQ plus community and our community of varied racial, socioeconomic, and ethnic backgrounds. Those communities should be celebrated, not vilified. I should also add that Saturday is Yom Kippur, the most solemn and holy day of the year for members of the Jewish faith around the world. To hold a rally in the valley that has become home to so many Holocaust survivors is unconscionable. Well said, Jeffrey Bernstein. Thank you so much for speaking out. I really wanted to read that to you all because I, I, I found it really like it was from the heart and, and had a very good message. Meanwhile, Vice President Harris is actually meeting the voters where they are. You've seen her on 60 Minutes. You've seen her on Colbert. Uh, now you've seen her on Howard Stern. She's been, I call her daddy. Uh, she's been like everywhere, Vice President Harris. And Trump has been hiding on Newsmax and refusing to do any sort of real press. And Howard Stern was speaking about the fact that Trump turned down 60 Minutes. I mean, Stern thought it was absolutely insane. And him and Vice President Harris had a discussion about that. Here's what they said. Out. You're taught you're coming here. You're going. You went on the View this morning. Yeah. You're, you're going to the, the shows. You're, you did 60 Minutes. By the way, I thought what was so amazing about 60 Minutes is the fact that Trump turned it down. Yeah. I mean, it just says so much. He didn't want to be fact checked. This is maddening. This is insanity. What do you mean you don't want to be fact checked? I think that you know, Howard. People ask me. Um, like, what do you think is going on? And what what is the tension here? What's at stake? And there are many things, and I can be much more articulate that, than what I'm going to say. But 
ultimately, I do believe that this is a, an election that is about strength versus weakness. Yeah. And weakness as projected by someone who puts himself in front of the American people and does not have the strength to stand in defense of their needs, their dreams, their desires, um, the work that must happen to make sure that we are a secure nation, that we are nurturing and protecting our alliances around the world, that we are supporting America's military, that we are fighting to bring the cost of living down for working families, that we are building businesses, building growth. Did you Howard Stern also made clear to VP Harris that she is in fact the law and order candidate. Like how could you even think otherwise? Watch this. Um, I, I just, I think that's some of the most important work that anyone can do, which is to require that we have a society that does not allow in particular for for violence and that kind of behavior to go without consequence, serious consequence. It's really weird too, because to me, you're the law and order candidate. And yet they yeah. try to paint you like you're some leftist who, 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 I don't know, who wants to have people running through the streets committing crimes. You were a prosecutor. I have put a lot of people in jail. I have personally prosecuted everything from, you know, um, child sexual assault to homicides. And, and now I want to end this on an optimistic note. I want to play you my favorite political TikTok that I've seen all week. And this is from Vice President Kamala Harris's TikTok feed. This was the second most watched political TikTok this week. And I hope you enjoy it. I found it incredibly heartwarming. Check this out. I love you so much. So another day and more panicking from Donald Trump as Vice President Harris continues to put in the work to actually win this election. I just want to say, no matter how many polls I read or data I give you, I want you to know that this is all in your hands and not to get complacent. So here's what I'm calling on you to do right now. Check your voter registration if you've not yet. It's possible you get knocked off the voter rolls, especially in a lot of these red states. So you could go to vote.org, check your voter registration, make sure your friends and family are also checking their voter registration. Here's something else I want you to do. Subscribe to this channel. We're on our way to 3.5 million subscribers, and that's thanks to you. The more people subscribe, the more people like these videos, the more people comment on these videos, the more people see these videos, the farther and wider these messages go. I wanna thank you so much again for watching watching this and I'll see you in a bit. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.